Jenny with Planner Perfect. And in today's video, let's talk meal planning. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I love meal planning and I've had a lot of women ask me how I do it and let's just, you know, I've been tweaking mine. I've been really tweaking mine because I I um I really changed mine up and I'm really, really excited to share with you because honestly, I've never really done meal prepping as much as I've done a baking day. So now I've combined both. I'm going to show you what I've done and how I do it to ensure that I eat nutritionally well and that I'm feeding my children nutritionally well and my grandchildren. So let's go ahead and I'm going to talk about my, what I'm doing. Okay, so now you've got to do what's best for you and, and where you're at, your health conditions and what you feel like is best for you and your family. All I know is that I've done research and research and research and have asked the tough questions to find out exactly what are we supposed to eat anyways. So I've gone from vegan to carnivore. I've done both scopes. I've done um, every kind of diet there is, which I'm sure all of you women can freaking relate. So, but now it goes beyond, as I turn 50 in January, now it goes beyond just, um, you know, losing weight or things like that or maintaining weight. It's, it's, it's really about nutrition and living to 120, okay? Not in, you know, but being active. You know, you want to be healthy and as healthy as you can be up until God takes you, okay? So at least that's my goal. Um, I... I just, it just, it, it hit me when I was like, you know what, Jenny, you've had eight children. By the way, if you're new to me, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Be sure to like and subscribe if you find this video helpful. And um, yeah, I have eight kids and you know what? I, I didn't take care of my body very well. Okay. So in my twenties, okay. Now my first daughter I had when I was 21 and I was drinking diet Pepsis like they were going out of style. Same with, I think my second and third child, same thing. I know my mom always, she was the granola mom of the 70s, but she was always very much so, you know, um, you might want to stop drinking those. And like, you might want to butt out. That was like, you ain't taking my diet Pepsi. No. So nursing, pregnancies, all of that, I really was on that diet Pepsi. I was like, I was into sugar. Man, I was a sugar fanatic, cookie dough in particular. It's like, let's bake cookies, you know, and I loved the dough. I just remember just being on that. I always laughed and joked with like my sister and my mom. I was like, you know, I'm always just like pregnant, okay? Hungry and chubby. I mean, there is there even a worse combination? I mean, it's like starving and chubby. I mean, does it get any worse? So anyway, it all really goes down to like nutritional deficiencies. Now, mind you, I have just stopped nursing. My youngest is seven. I nursed Blaine till he was five, okay? Now, all my other children, I don't need any comments on how weird that is. Just know that that's what I did, okay? I really believe in nursing, um, and I didn't believe in um, stopping it. I just let them, and it was very intermittent, you know, obviously, and I at five, I was ready for him to be done. I was like, now it's getting a little awkward, let's be done. And I would put like perfume on me. Like, and then he's like, Oh, it tastes like perfume. And I was like, Oh, does it? And then he just was done. <laughs> so that was a really good way for me to kind of get him off. Cause he loved it to go to sleep. Even when he was five, he had just turned five. My other one before him was four. And then the rest were like three, but I haven't tandem nursed, but sometimes some of them were so close together that they were only able to nurse to like one and a half actually. And that was a bummer. Some of them, I should have tandem nurse, but I didn't hindsight. Anyway, I, I mean, I never supplemented. I never supplemented. I know. Don't judge. Don't judge. I've already judged myself. I don't need you to judge me. I've already done it. Yikes. Um, and I'm surprised. I just, you know what my health problems were? Teeth problems, teeth problems, because honestly, your body will just pull from your teeth. I mean, and it certainly did. I had a lot of teeth problems and I'm, I'm paying the price for it right now. And, uh, and throughout having children, I 
it was torturous. And then it, I really hit like a max right here. <laughs> However, I, um, but I, again, I've had so much restorative stuff going on and it really, you know, not only was it costly, if I just would have taken care of myself, you know what, I'm definitely going to use all of this wisdom and I'm going to make sure that I share it and share it with my own daughters, okay? And daughter-in-laws, since I have five sons, I'll have a lot of those. So I have, I am really on a, a vitamin D supplementation um, regime. I did get tested in March. I'm at 30, which is very low of the spectrum. Um, I went to a functional medicine doctor who wants me up at 80, 90. Um, and I have read and studied and even looked in PubMed where intervals of up to 125 can actually in your D's can help, um, actually help with, um, healing autoimmune where it can really eradicate autoimmune and then wants you to stabilize at around 90 to hundred. So those are kind of my goals right now. And there's cofactors with D that you need to take like K2 and zinc and boron and A, retinol. And all of these different things I'm missing. So it was all in my, in my, and magnesium. So I have all of this wonderful things that I'm supplementing with. And I really love it. I'm also finding out that, and I also have a son who I need, he has lost his hair. Um, and this again is a really long story, um, but I will plan on sharing it some other video because there's so much breakthrough information that I, that I am getting, that I, I am, you know, I, all, my whole family will be healed, guaranteed, and I'm, I'm just very excited that I found this new information. So even when it comes to the gut, I've even done a video which really did uh, pretty well on OCD, um, probiotics and such. Vitamin D is even more crucial than probiotics because vitamin D is like the regulator for the gut as well. So you could take probiotics all, all day long, but if your D is low, then it ain't going to turn on. So there's a lot to it. So if you feel, if you're suffering from something, look into vitamin D, get your blood levels tested and go from there. Okay. Because I know I'm thrilled and I'm going, I already see changes. Okay. I mean like my skin, my feet. I don't, if you know me for any length of time, I've always shared, I've got feet that look like I've walked on coals my whole life or lived in, in a tribal community. Okay. With no shoes. Um, they look like they are, I mean, seriously, I, oh yeah, I could hike a mountain and it wouldn't, it wouldn't even hurt. It's like I'm wearing shoes, <laughs> but they have changed appearances and they've becoming more like a baby's bottom through supplementing with vitamin D. Okay. Now, if you're also in my age range, let's beef that up as well, because it just helps with everything. I'm also on vitamin C and with all this COVID stuff, and if you've heard anything, that also is correlated with vitamin D deficiency as well if you were problematic with it. So my gosh, you've really got to check that out. And if you're darker skinned at all, and I mean, it takes me, like it takes me, if I go out in the sun, and this is like the hottest, if it's a really hot, like 100 degree July day, I could get a tan in with no sun. I never wear sunscreen because I really don't get burnt because I'm careful but um, sometimes I will if I'm out there for eight hours, but um, it takes me a long time to get tan. Okay, let's just call that. Okay, if you're darker skinned, you gotta be out there for a longer time. Get outside in the sun more, make that a priority. And if you're darker skinned, you need more sun. I'm sure you already know that. So if you are a black woman, you've gotta get out there. You gotta get out there a long time. And a lot of black women, blacks are low in vitamin D check this out because it really could be a health, a really good health boost. So get your levels checked. And um, if you're not going to a functional medicine doctor, don't be fooled if they say, if you're down on the low end, such as 30s and 40s or even below, but they'll even say that you're low if you're below, I do believe 30, but that's okay. Because honestly, optimal is like 80, 90. So, Anyway, for my meal prepping, I'm surrounding all of my meal prepping around my new knowledge of how I want to supplement and how I want to eat. I've pulled out white sugar, white flour, 
and I'm gradually taking it out of my children's diet, except for monthly, something fun, celebratory. So if you know me too, I love my mom's white bread and I've, I've got it all stocked up and stored and I love to feed it for my family with toast and eggs and things like that. And even if it's just on occasion or a little bit, but my new thing I'm doing is I'm moving over to milled flour. So I'm taking an organic whole grain and I'm milling it myself and I'm getting all of the nutrients from that grain and I'm going to incorporate that into my baked goods, which will be using coconut sugar, which is very low glycemic, pastured eggs, breastfed butter, and that milled flour, which is excellent. And that is where I am baking, which I'm doing once a month for the whole month. And then I'm doing um, meal prepping once a week. So I will select my menu, what I wanna feed my children, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's gotta be all of it. And then I have to incorporate what my grandchildren are going to eat and Wesley, Wesley's one, my grandchild, and Waylon is four. And so I I really, I, I cook up and steam up veggies and potatoes and I, I do all of these things. Now, when you're changing a children's diet, and, and mind you, I've got health concerns for some of my children, so I really don't have time to fool around. And I don't want to fool around anymore. And I did fool around at first because it was stressful for me to make that move. But now I'm ready and um, I'm going to do it slow and gradual so he doesn't really um, notice. Mind you too, I'm definitely pulling out corn products. Now I would do the old Doritos and fun little fire chips that these kids like these days. I would let them and allow them in the house and I'm never doing it again. Number one, it is so sprayed with Roundup that number one, those kind of foods not only destroy your health, obviously, but also it's like, it, it, it is like a de-removal from your body. And um, same with a lot of like apples are heavily sprayed, almonds are heavily sprayed. You've got to make sure that you are having organic and especially those, I think strawberries are especially um, sprayed. You know, the Dirty Dozen has been around for a long time. You can check that out. Make sure that, you know, you're just, you're, you've you got to put your family's health first. You know, sometimes we just, we're all healthy. If you're in a healthy spot, you're like, ah, it's okay. You know, I don't want to spend this much on apples. Three, four bucks a pound, what are you, nuts? But then it's like, you know, I'd rather not eat apples then, honestly, than eat the apples that are so heavily sprayed because you can't wash it all the way off and it, it is getting into your children's system and your system and it's not good. I honestly, I spent so many years poo-pooing this. Like my mom would talk about lotions to deodorants. And I was like, what am I supposed to be a, a, a smelly baboon? I mean, what am I supposed to use? You know, I mean, deodorants never, I mean, they nothing ever worked. But now there is a lot of new stuff that really works out there. And I can't wait to share with you that video on my personal skincare, everything I'm changing over to turning 50. And I am moving everything over. I've got a, um, a natural deodorant, like completely natural and clean um, that works. I also am going over to Tropical Traditions for all of my skincare. So all of these things I'm moving all over and I'm, I'm just taking note of all of these changes and all these changes I wanna do, put it in my planner, and then I meal prep and do everything around it. So, um, I just wanna show you, now when I'm talking, now I am showing you here, and I'm gonna show you my planner and how I do it, but I also am gonna be doing some of these views about what I'm doing, how I froze all of it. So my meal planning is that I bake in the beginning of the month, and it's so beautiful to do that because you can, Take your time, use this beautiful Sunday afternoon or whatever, whatever weekend or day works out for you to be your baking day, but do it for the whole month. I just find that that's just, it's just too much for me anyway. When I was doing it once a week, it just was too much and I wouldn't do it. So I bake a bunch of pumpkin quick breads and that's using whole, gra uh, whole grain flour. And I use the hard wheat because that, um, you can use one-on-one -on -one with all purpose. And so I would do that. It, it turned out so good. Oh, it's so good. And use coconut sugar, low glycemic. You're not using just white sugar thrown in and ruining your efforts with the, using the grain flour, or the grain, um, yeah, flour. And banana bread, my kid's favorite. Guess what? They didn't even notice or skip a beat. My, my grandbabies, all that, just cramming it in their mouth. They had no idea I was using a different sugar or a different flour. So that, even though it looked very different, it did have a different appearance to it, for sure. And, but they didn't. They did. They couldn't tell. 
So win-win. Um, and so, uh, and then also just gradually. Now my next step is to be making a honey oat whole grain bread. Um, and, uh, I, that's going to be amazing. So I plan on doing that, sharing it all with you. Um, and then that, if we have this as our way of eating and having rice and chicken and, and sweet potatoes already ready, meal prepped in containers, um, rice for the kids to make quick tacos, um, with taco meat, um, using, um, having different things that they love, but switching it slowly and having everything from all my older kids, having it ready, meal prepped and ready, saves me so much time. Say, knowing what I'm doing for dinner that's healthy and easy, um, using spaghetti squash for noodles, um, trying to keep away as much of the white flour as I possibly can. I haven't weaned them over to whole wheat flour, but it is my plan to try for pasta, even though that's not even that great. Um, but even if I could get them over to the spaghetti squash, I would feel a lot better because even with whole wheat, it's just, it's still not the same as a whole grain. Um, so, but there are other pastas like a lentil or something like that, that um, I definitely could try. You just want to make sure that they are organic. So this is all a part in my meal planning and I put all of my baked goods and I do pizza crusts and I'm going to be doing whole grain pizza crusts next. So I'm really excited for that. And um, I'm going to be sharing all this with you. If you want to know more about it, be sure to tell me too. So I know that I'm not doing something or creating a video around people that aren't interested. But the whole thing about this whole grain is that you literally could live on this bread alone using whole grain flour because it has all the nutrients for life in it. How cool is that? So by using a little bit of flour and water. Now I have not been doing a sourdough in a while. I would love to bring that back. Um, but for right now I am just using a little bit of yeast and my whole grain flour with some honey and oats and olive oil to make this bread. And so I can't wait to share with you about that. So I get all of my baked goods in my freezer and I have it all in there with, I mean, listen, if you could do a pizza crust with, you know, whole grain, and then you're doing, and my family, my kids don't even like cheese. Is that odd? I tell you. So that's good because unless you're really using raw dairy or something that is really organic, you might not be doing that good for your health. So it's just got a matter of which cheeses you're choosing and, and all of that. And it's not like we have to be psycho about things, but especially, and I think a lot of us have children that have some sort of health condition these days because of the way that the, the, the factory farming is run and, 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 and all of the other different elementary, the environmental factors that are causing these different things for our children these days that were just nothing even back in the eighties. So let's, we're, we're, I feel like we're all kind of there where we're trying to really figure this out, navigate these waters. But I really feel like, you know, we can't even cheat. I'm just done with allowing the junk. And then, but if that is the majority of our diet is nice and clean, that when they, there is a birthday party or when there is something where you're doing something fun and it is just junk, once in a while, once a month is, I'm cool with that. If I can accomplish where my children are eating cookies made out of whole grain flour and some coconut sugar and some dark chocolate. I feel good about that, um, that they can have during the weeks and stuff like that, or the pumpkin bread or the banana bread that's got, that's some sweetness to it. But to really kind of get them off of that Western diet that, 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 that is so easy to get hooked on because you don't put the time into your food. So again, I hope this isn't kind of confusing, but I'm just kind of sharing how I do my month which I do all my months baking that I can just pull out when I'm ready, which is such a lifesaver. And then for my meal prepping, I meal prep on, I do my meal planning on Friday and on Saturday or Sundays when I go do my grocery day. And then I get all my containers out. And I, so I know what I'm doing and I know what the meals are. I know what the snacks are. I know what all of it is. And I have it all ready and prepped and which day and when, when everything is coming out and of the freezer or whatnot to feed kids with and all of that and ourselves, uh, the adults. And it's just a matter of um, getting it all planned and prepped and ready. Your chicken, your, um, if you've got some fish and salmon, I pre-cook my fish, I pre-cook my rice, I put it in a, um, a, a dish and um, 
it's just stacked in there and it lasts up to three days because I've got so many different um, people that are going to be eating it. So it's stacked up and it's for everyone. And I do a big batch of rice and a big thing of, of sweet potatoes and I'm cutting them in half. I do a big, huge sheet pan full of roasted veggies. And it's kind of just like a common place. It's like, that's the go-to kind of meals because they're nutritious and they're there for you. You can mix them and match them. I love doing a big thing of rice and then having some chicken um, and then having my children decide whether which ethnic group they want to go to. They could do Mexican or they could do even Chinese. Add a little bit of sweet and sour sauce on it or add a little bit of salsa and add some beans. So I kind of, uh, that kind of is a fun way to um, have them kind of pick which way they want to go with that. Add a little cilantro to the Mexican. I mean, it just works. So, but all I know is that feeding my grandbabies well has never been easier because I just take out the sweet potato that's already cooked with his veggies, pop it in the microwave for just a little bit and it's good to go. And it's just been just nothing but easy. Um, so, you know, having um, a natural cookie for a snack or a piece of banana bread or pumpkin bread has also been nothing short of amazing. And so meal prepping is wonderful, especially if you're wanting to lose some weight and feed your body with intention. So you know how hard it is, you know, so you're like, okay. So if you plan out what you want to eat and you write it down versus meal prepping, I always find that I'm like, nah, I don't really want that. And I just sort of scrap around and eat something that I really think I shouldn't. So, but when I meal prep and I've got salmon and rice and veggies sitting in there, I pull it out and I know this is what's gonna feed my body optimally. And so then that is what I'm eating for lunch and it's ready and available and easy and already done. So, um, and then there's chicken and I already have my salad ready and chopped with cucumbers and all these different veggies. So I'm eating all these raw veggies. So I have it already ready. And I have my dressing. I have this, I love Primal Kitchen uh, by Mark Sisson. I do like his because he uses the olive oil or avocado oil. You want to stay away from all those different oils like the, um, you know, the canola and the sunflower and, and nut oils. You want to stay away from those and you, and you want to get over to more um, the avocado or the olive oil for sure. And so I like his dressings because it's easy and I can do a single thing with it. It's just olive oil and balsamic and it's so good. And so I'll just put that on my... Um, on my salad with my chicken on it and I'm good to go, maybe some feta. But um, <clears throat> when you're meal planned, you also are feeding your body so nutritionally well that you will lose weight. So set a goal, um, meal prep your portions, making sure you've got your protein, you've got some good veggies and, um, and you've got, you know, you could do a starch, you could do a sweet potato. Those are really so high nutrition, nutritional value. Also too, when you put in rice and if you pre-cook your rice and pre-cook your potatoes and put them in the fridge, they actually become, I not, I'd have to check this, the real sure thing on this, but I think they lose some of their caloric value to them. And I do know they lose some of their starch when they are refrigerated into the refrigerator. So you kind of like, create a better food when you cook, when you um, cook, pre-cook, and then store, uh, refrigerate your starches overnight for like 24 hours. So there's a benefit to all of that as well. So um, anyway, this has just been so amazing to do. I plan on doing a lot of different ones, um, you know, for the week this week other than, but I like to really make sure I've got some of that fish in there that is, um, the wild caught and making sure that um, I'm just picking up the most organic vegetables I can and the sweet potatoes that are highly nutrient and um, cooking up big batches of rice and just getting it all ladled in and using some really good bread for my children and doing some organic lunch meat in there, making sandwiches or um, even doing a grilled cheese for my children on a whole grain bread. So it's just changing things up and getting them switched over is definitely the goal. And if you're like me, and if you wanna embark on something like this too, just know that it's gotta be incremental and it's gotta be, you've gotta like ease into this. And so that's why setting goals for like how you wanna do it for August and then like a one month goal, your three month goal, your six month goal, and then in a year's time, what does it look like for you and your family and how will you be eating? This, this kind of planning is just really vital so that you can, um, just really, uh, that's how you execute goals. I mean, honestly. So if you really want to follow through on how all this looks, 
then you've got to set incremental goals, like what this is going to look like for you here, 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 and here, and what you overall want, where you want to be at, and then work towards those goals. And if it's weight loss for you, then weigh yourself. Sometimes the hardest part is just stepping on the scale, but step on it, fight the fear, because once you know, then you're like, okay, well, at least I know where I'm at. And then you go from there and you start feeding your body well. I know for my mom, when she went from eating, you know, number one, she absolutely got rid of fibromyalgia by taking out white flour, white sugar. She took out white flour, white sugar, and she her fibromyalgia was gone within, I do believe it was three months. And um, she also lost like 30 pounds <laughs> and wasn't even trying. So because she took out white flour, white sugar, that's what happened to her. Um, my, you know, my mom is, she's very lean. Um, but she just, she looks great. And, you know, I think she has genetics on her side. She's all a Sicilian, but she, 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 she looks fantastic. I mean, she's 70 in like a week, like a couple days actually. And she'll be 70. We'll be celebrating my mom and dad's birthday are on the same day. So they're turning 70. Okay. And yeah. Okay. I mean, she looks fantastic and um, I want to follow after her shoes. Okay. I want to be in her shoes. I want to be like, like her and you can't do that willy nilly eating whatever and never knowing what your blood levels are for your vitamin D and your, and your different nutrients and what you put on your skin and when you put on your arms and what in the exercise that you do or don't do. So meal planning is important. Now, I don't like to go over 30 minutes for a video, so I'm going to now, with all of this knowledge, and I hope you got to see some of the great pictures of how I really went through this, taking you through my fridge and what I've done. But I'm gonna show you quickly how I'm kind of navigating my meal planning and meal prep in my planner and other tools that I'm using to be um, prepared. So let's, I'm gonna turn you around. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and talk meal planning. This part will be shorter. It's, it was a really long video, but I really want to show you kind of a quick glance on how I really, how I do this, where my mind is and how I meal prep like this for my family. And so you definitely need a plan. You need a good highlighter, you need a good pen. I, I'm sorry. I love me some Pilot G2. I absolutely love it. It's my go-to aside from my Lamy. Sometimes when I don't want to be fancy with a Lamy, I just pull out this one and I'm feeling really satisfied. So I've got my highlighters. If you haven't seen my video on how I use these, make sure you check it out. It is the bomb, okay? Because they're so fun. So I'm in the Isabella wallet. I have the Zsa, Zsa Wide Everyday Organized. And then I've got these um, color drilled notebooks here. Okay, so let me just start off by saying that before I even get into my planner with my meal plan and, and my errand running wallet that has all my lists and what I'm going to do is I work in these. Now I'm just going to show you some of these are my like my foodie ones. And so this pink one here I have for, um, this is what I've been using for the kids. So, um, and then I'm going to talk about each one briefly. Um, and then this purple one here, I am the kids food habits and goals and routines. So I even write it in here because I really want to brain dump stuff and what a way to brain dump before you write in something like a beautiful journal. I like to dump it in this and then really intentionally create that routine habit and intention then into my planner. So this is kind of my brain dumping and then I make it official in my planner. So that's how we do it. So that's when I actually set the intention at you know, it's a, it's, it's a goal when it's hits the planner. So, um, this one, here's the kids, the kids' food, um, routines and habits. And then I have this one for, I do believe this one's mine. This is my personal one and my own goals. So we'll kind of go over each one. Let's go over to the kids first. And that's in this, was it in this one? No, it was in the pink one. And it, it honestly, it can even be junky and scribbly and I'm just cool with it. So this is kind of when I started. It was um, 
meals I have on hand. I kind of wrote that down as something that I was writing down. I've got breakfast ideas. I always do every single meal, making sure just even if I'm, they're not eating them on the day assigned, at least I know all of the meals and the snacks and things that I have that they can choose from. Um, nothing's worse than when kids say, what's there to eat? I honestly, is I, I, I bleh, even your own husband. So, um, I've got, I love having a carb, a protein and a veggie because instead of just like, well, I need to lose weight and you're eating cardboard and you're not even accounting diet Pepsi because it's zero calories and you're doing this because you want to lose weight. This time it's, it's meal prepping for nutrition and to feed your body optimally. So you're being intentional about, you know, what your body is fueled by, what it needs, and then feeding your body that way. So it's such a different dynamic and a different way of looking at things when you are going to meal prep, when you're looking at it that way. Like, is this going to feed my body good? Am I going to feel good after I eat it? Am I going to benefit from this food? Blah, 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 blah. So I, I like doing that. I was kind of like, okay, we need this, this carb, this protein, this veggie. Um, and then milling my flour. I was right. I will do a separate video on, on my mill and what I do with that. Um, I also then started to hear some lunch ideas, one meal, two meal, three meal, um, three tuna meals, salmon meals, chicken meals, and all of that. Five taco salads. I've got different, so I made taco meat and I had all this ready D dinners. These were the dinners. And then I started to kind of, um, there's the kids' lunches. I was really scribbly and kind of got this going on. And baking. This was my, in the beginning of the, every single month, I start, I, I bake. And this was one of the things that I was doing. And I had, you know, chocolate chip cookies, raisin bread, cinnamon, re cinnamon rolls, pumpkin bread, banana bread, all of this. And that way throughout the whole month, I can pull some of this out and say, okay, this is for this moment. This is for this moment. This is for this moment because I've planned, prepped it, put it in the freezer. I know what I'm doing. I have it all delegated out and it's amazing. So this is what I baked and it's always at the beginning of every month. And so my fridge still has amazing baked goods in it from the beginning of August when I did it. So in the beginning of September, I will do the same. So I like having kind of like it says August 9th week. So the week of the 9th and, um, all of the different things that we'd be eating. Then I even put it down this way so I could really slow it down and get it down to exact detail. I got the 15th here and meal prepped for this week, which is what we're doing here. And I'm still meal prepping actually then for this coming week I have yet to do. So um, that's that. So then when it comes to, let's say, the kids' food and habits, this is stuff that I, I, I'm checking on with the kids, seeing if it's working. I'm very slow at it. Um, I am not like completely swapping things out. I'm very intentional about when and what they are eating, even if it's still some of their old favorites. So it's all been working really, really effectively. I'm also supplementing them with some um, vitamin D, and some probiotics, which is good. And um, I also got some blood tests that you can get at home. And let me tell you something, if your kid ever bleeds, which is like all the time, you can just take the little finger and prep it on the D-pad and send that sucker in and you can get a blood level on your children. Let me tell you, you'll be glad you did. Um, so this is like some of the things I'm giving some of my kids. And this was things I'm allowing and what I want them to eat on an everyday basis. So I like that it was kind of a routine -y thing and I can change it around and brain dump. So this one, this one was kind of more my personal one. And of course I do want to drop some weight. I'm not, I'm really kind of happy, but I would love to drop some just naturally and gradually. And I'm just not in a hurry. Um, but I just want to, my first priority is just feeding my body well. Um, so with me, again, I'm going to be tested for my vitamin D again in October, and I'm really glad about that. So as I supplement, I will um, be finding out what that is because I do want to reach that higher level. So I just have all these different things on what I want to, what I'm working on, which is the macros at every meal. Um, 
talked about the physical therapy that I was doing. I kind of went down to 1200 to 1400. It kind of depends on the day. And these are the kind of things that I will eat on the daily. And I even put the calories by them just because I'm watching. And once you kind of know the calories in them, you don't have to be so rigid and weird about it. I mean, I just know how much a little bit of grass-fed butter is or just a little bit of raw honey on an Ezekiel with an egg. It's just that kind of thing. So I'm just intentional about every single food that I'm really putting into my mouth. And it's been really, really good. I even involve some of my red wine. I even try to get like the non-sulfite. I can get it at Whole Foods and Thrive Market. They've got really good organic wines. So I'll, you know, it's all this great stuff. I've already got it out. My favorites that I like. Same with over here. Sweet potatoes, coconut aminos. Um, there are some frozen organic stuff that I'll do on the spot and I'll just make account for it and do it. So that's kind of what I do with mine. And I'll even do uh, mine for the for the week as well. And then I did have um, more, I do believe, is this the, no, it's not. What do they do? I already showed you all of them. So that's that. That is all of them and how I brain dump and feed the babies and what they're doing. So now this is where you take all that gold and you're gonna put it into your planner. So I'm in Zsa Zsa Wide, Everyday Organized. And this is what I got for my meal planner. And if you saw my video before about um, this, about my planner stack, that video, then you know that um, I was in something that I didn't want to be in. I wanted to be in this one. So this is our monthly meal planner. I thrive in this thing. So here you can do it once a week for your meal prep. I put all my meals in the calendar. So that's how I do it. And you, one time I've done it for the whole month, but I actually now like to plan it by week because sometimes I just change my mind too much. Like, what was I thinking? I'll do that. So um, <clears throat> I just would take this and I would take this drop, this brain drop. I'm like, okay, here's the breakfast. Line them up on the top. The lunches line them up in the middle and then in the dinners lined up at the bottom of the calendar this is just for meals so i would be doing that and then one month of meals so i could come back to this each week um but i like to write down all of the meals so i'm brain dumping i'm knowing all the meals i want to make and prep and then i'm going to take from here and i'm going to pull it and put it here as meals that our family loves, eats, and what I'm wanting to transition them to. And so I would write this all out. First week, second week, third week, fourth week. So you can do it one week, week of August, you know, first, bam. Then your second week, third week, fourth week. So it's so perfect. Am I right? Works for me like a charm. So now this is your baking day. Now you can bake once a week, which sometimes I trickle, like let's just bake together kind of things, or I want to try something new. And so that's fun. So I'll do that. Or what I'm going to do here is doing my one baking day for the full month. So I'll just compromise here instead of it being one, two, week, three, four, however you want to do it. I would just write down everything that I'm doing and the, uh, the dates that I'm doing it, the date that I'm doing it. So sometimes it takes me two days. I'll split it up over the weekend. So that is that and how I do that. So then what I'll do is I will, so you're mapped, right? Now you need your grocery list. There would be my baking day that I would pull from because I brain dumped it. And this is something I'm doing kind of like way in advance on the middle of a week. You know what I mean? I'm cuddled on the couch with a glass of wine type of thing. And then when I, it's time for me to really get busy uh, to really meal plan for the next week, that's when I would be getting into this and you sit down. So it's not like you're like, okay, right in here, right in here, right in here. It's not like that. It's like a glass of wine on a Wednesday night. Okay. And then over here on your Friday, Saturday, when you're ready to clean out your fridge, because my routine is that, um, and I wrote down, and I kind of showed you this in my last video, but like, I, oh, I'm over here. My routines are that I clean out my um, fridge on the weekends, and then I write out my grocery list, my meal prepping, and I get ready to meal prep and then I will run to the store. And then by Monday, I'm completely ready. So like Sunday, I clean out the fridge and I meal prep and put it in. Saturday, I'll go to the store. Friday, I'll actually write it all out in my planner and my grocery list. So I kind of have a routine I'm doing. And so it's like fun brain dumping during the week. 
weekend, just sit down with your planner. You kind of write down and make it beautiful in here and you're setting intentions. And then when it's time to go to the store, I take out the Isabella. I take out here, I just go to my grocery list and this is where I'll take with me to the store. So I would just, this is my grocery, this is my dinners and this is what I'll need. And so I'll just pull from, you know, my menu and write down exactly what I need. Mind you, I'm also in the Amazon subscribe and save blessing of my life. And that solves a lot of my, just my everyday stuff that we use. A lot of it has already came to me. So now I'm going to be, um, so it's, I just got so much stuff in. So it's really just, I'm getting some food. I'll go to Whole Foods, just me. Sometimes I'll go with my sister and I'll get everything I need. And by Monday, I'm set. And it's a lifesaver. And it's a lifesaver. And you know, my husband, I'm going to, she, my husband even said, well, you're going through so much work on this day. I mean, why? And I'm like, because if I don't do that, he goes, why don't you just do that every day? Like separate it all out. And I'm like, because I won't do it because I've got children. I'm busy. I won't feel like it. I'm doing so much work, um, business on one day, or maybe I'm exhausted. But what's really nice to know is that if I take care of that in the front end, my whole week is taken care of. I'm literally pulling out frozen homemade pizza crust out of the freezer and I've got dinner made. I'm literally pulling out taco meat that I've already prepared from the freezer. I'm warming it in my pot and taco salads and tacos are on are hot and ready and all with controlled ingredients. I know what's in the food. Um, for lunches for babies, I literally know what I'm doing instead of trying to just throw him a cracker because I'm busily, he's crying and I'm trying to find food. It's me being prepped and ready and everyone's eating well because I went through the work ahead of time. Nothing that you want that is really awesome is going to be done willy nilly and on the fly. And um, I'm telling you, this solves a lot of problems and I have been doing this um, for a while now, and it's been awesome. So there you have it. Thanks for sticking with me if you're still here to the end, because this was a super long video, but I hope this has inspired you to get back into your kitchen, feed your body optimally, set the right intentions, and be classy and organized and a woman of intention. That's the type priority, and that is the way you'll be going out with this. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time.